Okay, just gotta click that button. Ah, I think is it my and my end it circles and I never a hundred percent know exactly when I like I like your background. I gotta make one like oh, yeah, that. I can tell you the company. You can get it to say World Peace Diet or anything you want. Yeah, that's great. Isn't it cool? I, I learned about it by, of course, our mutual friend Dr. John McDougall, who always had one that said Hey everyone and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host Chef AJ and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. So I've never met today's guest in person. I was so hoping I would when I was speaking in Hawaii at the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, but I did meet him online three years ago when he was an expert for the very first Truth About Weight Loss Summit and I really learned so much from his presentation because he speaks my language which is calorie density. In fact he's written a whole book about it. But if you watch my show regularly, you know he made a, a very brief appearance last month during the surprise birthday tribute to Dr. John Dougal. Why was he invited? Well, because as it turns out, he spent a dollar once that really changed his life. He bought Dr. John McDougall's practice when Dr. McDougall left Hawaii, and he is now considered Dr. Shintani a living treasure in Hawaii. We're gonna figure out who gave him that title, but he's somebody that just is, I don't know him very well, but I just know, I just think he's amazing. And we're gonna learn more about him today. Please welcome Dr. Terry Shintani, a hard man to track down. Hi, uh, so can you hear me okay? I can, but for some reason, I'm not seeing you so good. I mean, you're not, it's, the Zoom isn't taking you. So talk, can you guys see him big? Cause right now I'm only seeing me big. Yeah, you have to talk for Zoom to see you. All right. Well, okay. Oh, that's right. That's speaker view, right? If you're in speaker view, then I kind of have to keep a conversation going. Right. So um, now I can see you. Perfect. So can this, yeah. All right. Okay. So anyway, um, uh, let, yeah, let me just tell you how I got started, and then um, uh, and then maybe we can uh, get a little bit more into the peace diet. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm born and raised in Hawaii. I'm just a regular kid. Um, my, uh, my, my parents didn't go to high school. Um, I'm third generation American of Japanese ancestry. Um, uh, my dad was supposed to be drafted into World War II into the famous 442nd, which was an all Japanese company that had more, won more medals in World War II per capita than any other military unit, uh, but um, uh, he had, uh, when, when I was six months old, he got cancer. And this was uh, 1951, so now you know I'm 70 years old. And uh, um, uh, as it turns out, he, um, uh, it was a scary time because there were, there were no treatments for cancer back then. So, um, uh, all I could do, I, uh, by when I was three years old, he got a second surgery, uh, and I could tell my my mother was scared because in those days, you know, if the cancer spreads, you're dead basically. And I said, "Ma, can't we do anything?" And she said, "No, the doctors have nothing for him." And it just really bothered me. They 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 didn't have anything for my father, so all I could do was pray. You know, so, uh, you know, mom said, oh, well, all we can do is pray for the best. So I actually started praying every night for my father. Please don't, dear Lord, please don't let dad die of cancer. And he didn't die. He lived. He was one of the few people in the 1950s who survived a colostomy and colon cancer. And so I always attributed that to prayer. So I always thought, even back then, that prayer was healing. So now fast forward to um, when I became an adult, uh, and it's kind of a long story because I was a lawyer first. And um, when, it, when I was in law school, I, I actually didn't think I, I had good enough grades to go to medical school, so I went to law school. And while I was in law school, um, I met uh, Michio Kushi who was the founder of American Macrobiotics. And uh, um, I, was, I was very much into prayer and spiritual things. 
And he said, you know, your prayers will get better if you eat right. And I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. So I started eating really strictly a macrobiotic style. But he, but he said all the holy people would eat a plant-based diet. Um, if you look at the, the Buddhist monks, the Shaolin temple monks, the book of Daniel, uh, you can see it throughout history that the people who developed their spiritual side would, would follow a vegan diet. And so I did that. And sure enough, my health uh, returned. And, you know, in the book of Daniel, it's really an interesting story that um, Daniel went on a, a plant-based diet for 10 days. And uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, who was trying to recruit him to be an advisor, judged him to be 10 times smarter than all the others. And you know what's really interesting? I started becoming, well, I wouldn't say 10 times smarter, but I went from a very mediocre law student. I became a top law student uh, and I made law review. And uh, as my academic ability started to rise, I started thinking, maybe I'm smart enough to be a doctor after all. And I would pray about it. And the real, the real interesting thing is that when I would pray, I would get visions because, you know, I was eating carefully. And so my spiritual side seemed to open up. And I started having images, but never of me being a lawyer. And here I'm in law school, right? But I, I started getting visions of me being a healer, a doctor. And so it started to bother me. And so I said, dear Lord, uh, do you really want me to be a doctor? I would pray, Remember, you know, from when I was a child, I would pray all the time. And the, um, I would always get an affirmative answer. So I said, okay, Lord, I would have these silent conversations with in, during my prayers. If you want me to be a doctor, if that is your plan for me. I'm going to go take a chemistry course because I didn't have science. I, I, I have a business degree and, a, and I was working on a law degree. So I said, if I take a chemistry class and I get an A, that's a sign to me that you want me to be a doctor. So during the summer of law school, I took a chemistry class, which didn't make sense to anybody but me and the Lord. And I got an A. And then I got another A. And then I got another, and if you look at my transcript, I'm a straight A 4.0 pre-med student. And it was kind of a clear message that maybe I shouldn't be a lawyer. Maybe I should go be a doctor. And that's kind of my history of how, it was actually a spiritual journey that took me from being a lawyer into being a doctor. So now fast forward to medical school. Uh, in medical school, I thought, you know, uh, if you know anything about macrobiotics, they were healing all kinds of uh, illnesses, like cancer, for example, which was why, why I was interested in macrobiotics, because they had an answer for cancer. Um, they have a lot of examples of people with stage four cancer who recovered. Uh, following a macrobiotic lifestyle. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go to a medical school and I'm going to put the science be behind why the macrobiotic diet heals diabetes and hypertension and autoimmune disease and cancer. And I go to medical school. Four years later, they didn't teach us anything about diet. I mean, zero. I mean, literally. And I know exactly what they teach because I'm, you know, I used to be a professor at the medical school, so I know what they teach. And so I was so disappointed in my medical uh, education that after medical school, I went to Harvard to get a degree in nutrition. And I went, I went to Harvard because it was real, right next to, it was 10 minutes away from the Cushing Institute where they taught macrobiotics. So I went to Boston, I studied modern nutrition during the day and macrobiotics at night. And uh, interestingly, I, I wish every doctor would 
go through what I went through because during the day they're teaching, well, once you're diabetic, you're always diabetic. And in the evening I'm at the microbiotic center and we're getting rid of diabetes. Like it was easy. Uh, and they would say, Oh, you need all this meat for protein during the day. And I go to, and we're, we're, we're fine with a near a vegan or a near vegan diet, no animal products. And there's all these contradictions where, uh, and, and of course, modern science is useful. Um, and, I, and I think it's really important that I have, I have both a formal nutrition and medical education, but also a formal Eastern medicine. Uh, macrobiotics, by the way, is based on you know, China, uh, it's, it's a Japanese form of Chinese medicine where they balance yin and yang and they have the five elements, etc. So I, I was training in both worlds. And the interesting thing is, you know, <laughs> the old way was getting better results than the new way. It was very, very, um, it was jarring because here I am, I'm already an MD and they're teaching me about, you know, uh, um, I went to four years of medical school, right? They didn't teach us how to heal. They taught us how to medicate. It's very, very disappointing. And I'm, I'm studying macrobiotics and a lot of their, a lot of what they taught, I didn't think was truly scientific, but they were getting results. And so it was really useful for me to try to triangulate the modern science with the uh, ancient ways. So that's kind of my background as to why I got interested in nutrition. So then I come home to Hawaii with this knowledge. And then I meet Dr. John McDougall, who's actually putting science to this kind of approach. And so I actually started, he, he was kind of mentoring me in, in medicine. And uh, um, when he moved from Hawaii, uh, he gradually, his, his practice gradually dwindled and then, but he still had very loyal patients. And uh, he said, Terry, would you uh, consider taking over my practice? I said, yeah, sure, but I don't have any money. He says, I'm gonna charge you a dollar <laughs> because I was the only doctor he trusted his patients with because when I, you know, when I saw a patient, like John, I would do nutrition first, not medicine first. So that's how I got to meet John. But I actually have a very deep uh, uh, background in Eastern and Western nutrition and medical science. So that's how I uh, came to where I am now. Now, the reason I wrote the peace diet was very few people were talking about the spiritual side of healing well i didn't want to just talk about the spiritual side so i wrapped it all up together and um uh i um i i really made a true truly holistic uh a, a truly holistic um what or how do i want to say it um diet approach because i think everybody knows it's not just diet right there's exercise there's there's meditation, there's, you know, uh, other modalities, uh, there's supplementation, there's, you know, sunlight. And, you know, now we're talking, now we're realizing that, uh, you know, vitamin D will cut some COVID mortality by over 50%, you know, but that's sunlight, right? So, but I put together a, a whole person program with the peace diet. So that's what, uh, so that's how I, I um, came forward. And in the peace diet, I talk about weight loss, about blood pressure, about uh, heart disease, about cholesterol, about diabetes, blood sugar, even cancer. And I actually have a chapter in there called the physiology of peace, how people feel peaceful inside. All right, so I've kind of been wow. rambling. Well, so. well I, you know, it's so funny, Dr. Shintani, when you said you didn't think you were smart enough to be a doctor, so you became a lawyer. Yeah, no, that's right. Well, that, that, well the uh, truth some, is, lawyers, some lawyers might take offense to that, but I think that's so funny. Did you ever practice as a lawyer? Uh, I uh, on, only, 
Well, for a little while, I was my my dad had a had a business, um, and so I I was basically just the corporate lawyer. But then the the one really good thing I did um, was I wrote the law that legalized traditional Hawaiian healing. That's a that's a whole nother um, dimension because when I came back from nutrition school. Um, yeah, you know, I'm also the author of the Hawaii diet. And um, when I came back from nutrition school, um, spiritual guidance had me go to a community where they had native, native Hawaiians. And uh, the, uh, 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 the native Hawaiians have a very difficult problem. Um, like like almost all minorities, their health suffers. And, you know, Hawaii suffers from colonization syndrome. You know, they're, they're, the culture was being destroyed by, the, by colonialism. And so Hawaiians start to drop to the bottom of the economic status. And un, unfortunately, on top of that, they have what they call thrifty genes, they easily, Polynesians, Pacific Islanders, Hawaiians, easily gain lots of weight. And so they have a great deal of nutrition problems. And um, uh, they suffer from the highest rate of obesity in the nation. And that I'm saying bar none, they, 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 there's statistics about that. They're very similar to Pima Indians who also suffer very high rates but they had the highest mortality rates from nutrition related disease. So I started working there and some of my patients were, th I had 300 pound patients by the dozen. I had 400 pound, 500 pound, 600 pound patients. Uh, I had, I took care of a family of kids where the 13 year old was over 300 pounds girl. Now this is a girl, 14 year old was 400 pounds and the 15 year old was already 500 pounds. So that's the kind of people, and um, uh, some people are stunned when I, you know, when, when I tell the, I, I was lecturing in Japan and uh, I had a translator and I said, and they use kilos in Japan. So I said, oh, my largest patient was 400 kilos. And the translator whispers to me, you mean pounds, right? And I said, no, he was 890 pounds. That's 405 kilos. Um, so, um, I've had probably as much experience with very large people, uh, maybe more so than almost any physician in the world. So, um, so I've actually dealt with very difficult problems with obesity, diabetes, hypertension. And uh, I actually, uh, 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 my program that I put together, I put, I put, uh, uh, native Hawaiians on their ancient diet and I measured their outcomes. In other words, I took them from a modern American diet, you know, spam and, you know, meat and chicken and French fries and burgers and things. And I put them back on their ancient diet, which was, you know, whole food, you know, taro and sweet potato and vegetables and fruit and, you know, seaweed and things like that. And uh, um, the interesting thing was they, they told me I was crazy. I told them, they, they said, well, how much are you going to feed them? And I said, I'm going to let them eat as much as they want. And they go, no, you can't do that. They're already obese. And I said, yes, I can. Um, because the calorie density of the food is, is too low. They can't eat enough to gain weight. And I, I, my colleagues thought I was nuts. He says, no, 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 you cannot do it. They call it an ad lib diet. That means you let them eat as much as they want. And I said, watch this. And so it, it happened uh, in, in, uh, in 20 day, 21 days, they lost 17, average loss was 17 pounds. Absolutely stunning. Um, but what's more is I was getting them off insulin very quickly. They're diabetics. I was getting their blood sugar normalized very quickly. In fact, so quickly that uh, Newsweek picked up the article. Uh, so I have a full page story in Newsweek about me getting 
somebody off people off of uh, insulin in a short time. I, uh, one lady, I took her off of 80 units of insulin in five days. And uh, my colleagues would say that you can't do that. That's impossible. But I'm saying if their sugar starts to drop, you have to lower their insulin. That's malpractice not to do that. So anyway, so that's how I, <laughs> that's how I, uh, got into, uh, how do I, how do I put it? Cultural diets, traditional diets. But on top of that, remember I said colonialism was destroying the people. Well, there's this concept called cultural genocide. And cultural genocide means if you colonize a people, you destroy the culture, you destroy the people. It's happening to the, been happening to the Native Americans for 100, 100 years, over 100 years. Same thing was happening to Native Hawaiians. And uh, I said, well, if it works that way, then if, I res if, if you destroy the culture and you destroy the people, then if I restore the culture, I'll restore the people. So during my programs, I would always bring in traditional Hawaiian healers, you know, to, to reinforce their own uh, traditional healing um, cultural practices. So every night during our program, we would have a medical lecture, which I would do, or, or I'd bring in uh, another medical expert, a nutrition uh, lecture and a traditional cultural healing uh, lecture. So we brought out all the native Hawaiian healers. And uh, this is kind of a really long answer because you asked me about, you asked me if I, what I did as a lawyer. Well, because I, th I, was, I thought it was so important that the um, Hawaiian culture be restored, to restore the Hawaiian people. Um, I finally, I, I realized that the healing arts are dying off because it's illegal to practice without a license, practice medicine without a license. So I wrote the law that exempted Native Hawaiian healers from licensing. And so um, uh, the legislature asked me, well, how is it going to be regulated? And I said, that's easy. We'll put together an elders council. Kupuna means elder in Hawaiian. A kupuna council. The elders will oversee the healers. But I don't want the state regulating healers because the healers knowledge predated the state, the, the, the colonization. So how is a modern state going to regulate uh, a, a, a practice that basically they know nothing about? So um, I wrote the law that legalized traditional Hawaiian healing in Hawaii. And, and that's one of the one of the few things I did as a lawyer, but I think it's one of the best things. So that was my, that's, that's my, that's the extent of my legal career. That is, that's, that's a wonderful story. Yeah. The, you got your, uh, what did you get from Harvard in nutrition? Was it a PhD an MPH? What did you do at Harvard? No, um, my, uh, it's a master's in nutrition, but it's an MPH. I, you can get nutrition as an MS or an MPH. But I, I, I chose the MPH route because for public health, that means I would promote it to the public. And that's what I really wanted to do because no matter how good your nutrition science, if you can't get it to the public, it's useless, right? You, you, you know it, but you don't do it, it's useless. So that's why I went the public health route and I do lectures and radio shows and YouTube shows and I've written I've written 16 books now, so, um, and Peace Diet is one of them. Wow. Yeah. I just want more people to know about you because I just think you're extraordinary. And I'm curious, uh, Dr. Shintani, did you ever have any weight problems yourself? Yeah, actually I was a chubby kid. Uh, so I know what it's like to be a little bit overweight. I, um, but it was basically until I, you know, until puberty, and then I lost my baby fat. But I know what it's like to be a, you know, I see these fat cheeks. <laughs> how, how, how many years ago did you adopt a plant-based diet? Say that again? How many years ago did you adopt a plant-based diet? Uh, I, I know the year exactly. It was 1976. So what is oh that? 40, 
40. Not 40. You beat me by a year. That's a year before me in 1977. <laughs> Yeah. You, you know, it's uh, so uh, the, the reason that I know that is it was my first year of law school. So, yeah. And that was my first yeah. year of college. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're 10 years apart. Uh, yeah. so, uh, I got you a few years. Uh, oh, that's incredible. You know, I, I love that you talked about how the, the, the people in Hawaii, they are genetically overweight. It's not because of trauma or this. The, people have to understand how big of a role genetics plays in this. And like you said, they have those sturdy genes. And so on anything but their natural diet, they're going to be overweight. Right. Yeah. And the, and the interesting thing is, if you look at the pictures of uh, Hawaiians a uh, hundred something years ago, before the modern diet, they were all slim and athletic. They, they looked, I mean, they looked strong, you know, they, they weren't overweight. They were, they were, um, they look, uh, very healthy. And, uh, it's just sad that, uh, modern American diet has, has wreaked havoc on ma not just Hawaiians, on many uh, populations. Sorry, my phone is right, ringing. But, but it's, it's particularly apparent in Hawaii when already yeah. genetically yeah. they are so predisposed. Right? right? Yeah, right. Well, yeah, it's what they call the thrifty gene theory. It's like because they're a voyaging uh, culture that if they took a long voyage, uh, the people who could hold on to calories were the ones who survived. It's the same thing with the Pima Indians. They would go through periods of drought. And so the ones who survived were the ones who had what they call thrifty genes who could hold on to calories. And it's an adaptive advantage when there are periods of food deprivation. But when we, you know, right now we don't have food deprivation. So now it's a maladaptive uh, Right. And we haven't had food deprivation in most places, at least in the United States, for a very uh, long actually, time. Actually, what's killing America is food excess. We have too much food, and it's really, it's unfortunate. Our, our, uh, our system of government and economics uh, uh, rewards the production of junk food. Because, you know, let's face it, it's easier to put dead food on the shelf, which doesn't uh, spoil, you know, yeah, you, you can put a candy bar on, on, on the shelf and it'll last for, you know, two, three, four, five years, but you put a head of broccoli, uh, and you know, it's got a shelf life. So, <clears throat> so who was it that brought all this horrible food to Hawaii? Like spam, like whose idea was that? Well, well, the spam came during world war two because there were, uh, you know, they, they invented spam for the GIs. It was a high calorie, something that they could, uh, that their, that their uh, chow wagons could carry uh, without refrigeration. And so it, spam and corned beef, canned corned beef became a staple of Hawaii. You know, my parents grew up with that kind of stuff. And I grew up with it because that's what they would make. And it was inexpensive and it didn't need refrigeration. So you know you, oh. who knew who knew it was so unhealthy back yeah. then well, what i love about your approach is the same as mine and the same as dr mcdougall's the calorie density approach which people don't believe they can eat potatoes rice and beans especially at libidum but i bet with all the patients you've seen you've probably never seen it not work oh yeah it's it's uh it's it's kind of it's crazy because um, you know, I won a national award for my program. We have a we have a plaque from the U.S. Secretary of Health um, for that Hawaiian Native Hawaiian project because because uh, we had the worst beginning statistics. We wound up with the best ending statistics, and uh, we actually didn't have a grant. We actually did it for, through the community, and they were absolutely stunned that we could do that and. For, for me, who had the training that I've had, who, uh, uh, where I'd seen people get off their medication and lose the weight and lose hundreds of pounds, and you know, I've already seen it. It was like, how come everybody doesn't know this? How come every doctor doesn't know what I do? How come every doctor doesn't know how to suppress autoimmune disease and rheumatoid arthritis and uh, you know, I have a, I have a cancer, uh, a couple, you know, a couple of cancer, you know, you realize I don't specialize in cancer, but I, when people come to me with cancer, 
they live longer. And some of them inexplicably are still alive 12 years later after a stage four cancer diagnosis. So I write about that in the book also, because I, I, was, I was stunned that nobody talks about that kind of thing. Uh, are you the only vegan doctor on the island? Say that again, am I the only? Are you the only vegan doctor on the island? No, I'm not the only vegan doctor on the island. Uh, however, I'm, I'm, I may be one of the few in the country that has a nutrition background. I mean, you have all these doctors claiming to be nutrition experts and they have no nutrition background. Um, uh, you know, you ask them, okay, uh, where did you, you know, it was, it was really funny when I first came out, uh, my dietary approach was so radical that this cardiologist came up and I'm a young, I was a young doctor then I had just gotten out of school and I was trying to promote my, you know, I was doing my Hawaiian diet thing. And this cardiologist says, that's not what the heart association says. Where did you get your nutrition background? I said Harvard. Where did you get yours? And that was the <laughs> and that was the end of the discussion, you know, because I knew he had no nutrition background. Yeah, I and and the truth is, think for yourself. Even nationwide, how many doctors do you know that has a new degree in nutrition? Maybe Walt yeah. Willett, perhaps. I don't know. That's maybe two. Maybe you and oh, Walter Willett. Oh, Walter Willett. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, that too. Think, but, yeah, but yeah. And by the way, Walt is my mentor. I, 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 I still. I've the last time I visited him, you know, he, he, uh, he welcomed me, and uh, we had a nice conversation in his office. But he doesn't. I don't think he he doesn't practice medicine. So maybe I should say, what practicing MD do you know who has a nutrition degree? And I, I, I can't think of any. Wow. I mean, no disrespect to John, but he doesn't have a nutrition degree. No disrespect to Dean Ornish, he doesn't have a nutrition degree. No disrespect to a lot of these other doctors, but they don't have the formal nutrition training. Uh, and, it's, and I'll tell you something, when I went to Harvard and I joined the nutrition department to study, do you know how many other doctors were there studying nutrition, medical doctors? None. None. It was absolutely, for me, it was like shocking. It was like, how come nobody's interested in, in, in this? Because this is where the healing will take place. So that's my that's, The patients that come to see you, are they coming to see you specifically because they want nutritional counseling or it's just they happen to show up in your office? Um, no, they uh, actually, I, in Hawaii, I, I'm actually pretty well known. Uh, uh, my books um, have been bestsellers in Hawaii, not nationwide. I haven't, I haven't been fortunate enough to, to get a nationwide bestseller. But in Hawaii, uh, I'm, I, well, that's one of the reasons I, I, I was named a living treasure in Hawaii, because I've done, you know, just about all of my work here. And I've, I've done it in many sectors. I've done lectures through to senior groups, to um, to homestead groups, to, to, you know, I've, I've lectured everywhere from kindergarten to the NIH and everything in between. I've even lectured at the Supreme Court uh, in Hawaii. The, the, this, uh, the Supreme Court, um, the Chief Justice noticed that his justices and staff were getting overweight and not well. So they had me do a lecture in the Supreme Court, uh, in, in the court itself. And I gave a lecture on nutrition in the Hawaii Supreme Court. So, but uh, I, I've, I've lectured at every level you can possibly think of. I've lectured at the United Nations. I've lectured um, at medical schools at, you know, T. Colin Campbell at Cornell. I used to be a visiting professor at Cornell for Colin Campbell. So. What, what have been the highlights of all your work? Well, the, uh, for me, I think um, what 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 I feel really good about is in Hawaii, a lot of these very overweight people are pillars of the community. And uh, too many really good people die young or die prematurely. 
So I've gotten a lot of, I have a, a, a lot of folks who were like 350 pounds who are now 200 pounds. I have one guy, I, I can't mention his name, but he's a famous uh, actor in Hawaii. He was up to two, 340 pounds and now he's 198. Yeah, and he's much healthier. I w Do you remember the wonderful Hawaiian singer named Iz? Oh, yeah. I wish he would have gone to you because he was, he was such an extraordinary I, singer. I, actually, the, the, the truth is that um, his people said, hey, why don't you go talk to Iz and get, you know, and this is, this is a basic lesson. I never see people unless they call me themselves because the family cajoles them and then they'll say, oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, to s satisfy the family. But if they're not ready, they're not ready and they won't do that well. So finally he called me up and when I, uh, when I um, finally saw him, uh, bottom line, I can't say too much because of, I mean, he wasn't really my patient, but confidentiality. Bottom line was, he, he was already uh, going downhill and I called his doctor and I said, how come he's not in the hospital? He should be in the hospital. He's, he's, having, he's in general respiratory failure. And uh, the doc, his doctor said, the insurance company basically got him kicked out. They didn't want to pay. It was really a sad situation. And uh, uh, sure enough, uh, he went back in the hospital after he started getting very, and he went in and out and, uh, he didn't survive that year. So it was he, very he was, sad. He was such an amazing uh, talent. One of my yeah, amazing. The, the, um, you know, I, uh, I have a few slides. Uh, is there a way for me to you, you, you mention? Yeah, have you ever done it before? What you have to do is you have to have what you're showing already on your desktop open. Yeah, I see. I see the share screen. And then you and then you share and then you uh, share. Okay, let screen. me let me try this because I uh, let me try this. Okay, I'm going to start sharing screen. Okay. Can you see it? Sure. I don't see slides yet, but it says you have started screen sharing. Is it? I see it on my screen, but yep, I don't know. Perfect now. Yep. Now I see it. It says the peace diet. All right. So this is just about a handful of slides. Um, this is the book, the peace diet book. Um, uh, what's unique about this is I put diet in the middle, but I have internal aspects. That's prayer. Love is emotional, mental, physical. And I have external, this year, exposure to environment, earth, air, fire, and water, basically. So I talk about those aspects because to me, it's not just about diet, right? It's about the whole person, internal and external. And I talk about anti-aging, how to eat more to weigh less. That's what we did for the Native Hawaiians. Uh, Anti-inflammatory, so for pain and autoimmune disease. Uh, about heart disease and cholesterol, about blood sugar, cancer, and I have a chapter called The Physiology of Peace, why pe people feel peaceful when they're eating properly. Uh, and so, yeah, this is my schema. Um, you know, I have this yin yang symbol in the background. I think you can see my little, my little bit of macrobiotic influence. But this is the internal aspects, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And these are the external aspects, you know, earth, air, fire, and water, you know, clean water, clean food, clean air, and fire is clean energy, you know, because um, we need to be careful, you know, energy is interesting. You get 15 minutes of sunlight and you get vitamin D, but you can get sunburned, you can overdo it. And now we have this whole issue about 5G affecting, you know, uh, sperm count and all kinds of other issues, ADHD and so forth. So I, I talk about other aspects besides diet. And uh, uh, actually, uh, I, this is my eat more, lose weight while you sleep. This is one of my most popular side books. Um, if you want a summary of the peace diet, you can go to peacediet.org. Amdiet.com also has it, 
but peacediet.org. And if people go there, they can get a summary of the book. Uh, I'll give them a free copy of e of Lose Weight While You Sleep, but it's an ebook. So if they sign up here, uh, they can get a summary of the Peace Diet. And uh, there's a link to, if you want to buy the Peace Diet, you can do that. But just uh, go to this peacediet.org and you can get a summary of the Peace Diet. And um, uh, if you sign up, you get a, a free ebook called Lose Weight While You Sleep. Now, uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, is it okay? Uh, uh, I was featured on national TV when I won the national award. Um, can I show this on, or is this kind of a, this, this is a, this is a three minute clip from uh, Dateline and be, from a, uh, CBS this morning. You certainly can, can show it. Sometimes there's a little delay with Zoom, but give it a try. And if it doesn't, we can put a link to it. But sure, give it a try. Yeah, uh, because um, this is just a this is just a uh, like a three three minute video. Let's see if it works anyway. Okay. Can you hear it? survey has named Hawaiians as the healthiest people in the country. But Dr. Bob Arnott, who is just in Hawaii and is now back in New York, tells us that's not true for everyone who lives here. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Harry. Hawaii does score number one on the nation's Good Health Report card with the longest life expectancy and the second best infant mortality rate. But hidden in those statistics are the native Hawaiians who make up the unhealthiest group in the entire nation. In fact, Native Hawaiians have the worst health of any ethnic group in the U.S. The death rate from heart disease is three times higher. The foods that we uh, eat today are very, very different from the foods that our ancestors ate. And that brought about some of the investigations. The investigation began with Ed Aikala. At one point, the 50-year-old Hawaiian weighed 425 pounds and a blood sugar level of 800 had severe chest pain and almost died from kidney failure. I overindulged in, uh, in fat food because, uh, well, ignorance is not a dirty word. It just simply means you don't know. And I was ignorant to a lot of things uh, that concern nutrition value in foods. I want you to show me what a typical three month fat. like it might be frozen. Ed's health is miraculously better. He's lost hundreds of pounds. His blood sugar, blood pressure, and cholesterol are all near normal. But his good health didn't come from a bottle. It came from a return to a traditional diet. We demonstrated that uh, eating this food will not only prevent uh, many of their problems, but will actually reverse the high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Uh, we've gotten people off of insulin who have been on insulin for much of their life. The diet has saved Ed Icala's life. He's totally off insulin. He's only taking two medicines out of that great big bag you saw. And what's more, he can eat all he wants. Ed's become a convert, encouraging other Hawaiians to drop the high-fat American diet and return to their roots. And he's made another convert, me. I'm off junk food forever. All right. All right. Um, so did you hear that? At least some of that? Oh, absolutely. That's incredible. He got off all his medications. He lost weight. You look so young in that video. <laughs> I was. I was. <laughs> that, was uh, that was like 25 years ago. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's what I have in the peace diet. And um, if you go to one of these, uh, um, if you go to peacediet.org or amdiet.com, uh, you get a summary of the peace diet. And uh, if you sign up, uh, I, I'll send out a free lose weight while you sleep ebook. So that's my little story. 
Uh, That's amazing. You know, you talked about the the siblings that were, uh, I think they were three, you, you can take off screen share if you're done sharing, if you like, that were yeah, like okay. three, yeah, okay. three, four, 500 pounds respectively. Did they adopt this way of eating and have they seen some improvements in their health? Uh, yeah, actually, to some extent, because I actually kept in touch with them uh, for years. And uh, uh, um, when they became adults, uh, I, each of them had lost over, kept uh, over 100 pounds off. The, the, um, the, the girl, uh, she used to be like 325. She's still overweight. She's more like 220 still overweight but not massively overweight the middle kid is still overweight he's more like 280 and the tall guy the the 500 pound guy actually has done the best he started out at over 500 uh, but he's pretty tall he's six feet tall um, but uh, today he's like I would say 250 or so so anyway, uh, they they, um, they turned their health around. They're still overweight. They're, they're not in great health. But uh, I would say that the weight that they used to be at, be at was, uh, uh, was very dangerous. And they're, they're out of that kind of danger. And the thing is, when you're that large, you, you almost become non-functional. And at least now they're functional. So I think that's important. Dr. Shintani, how is obesity treated mostly on the island? Because I'm sure most doctors don't follow the nutritional protocol you recommend. Are they doing lots of gastric bypass surgery? I know I noticed there's a new drug now that's FDA approved for obesity. Uh, say, say that again. Uh, how, how is obesity handled commonly on the island? If, if somebody goes to a doctor other than you, what oh, are they You know, uh, right. Um, it's not, they don't actually very few doctors handle it very well. You know, they say, well, you, you just got to eat less. Yeah, you know. But you say you got to eat more. <laughs> That's right. But you got to eat more of the right stuff. And when I show them that, that that's that's really an eye-opening thing because um, when you're, when, uh, one of the reasons my study became well known is because I actually measured the food they're eating and they were eating more food, but their calorie can't count came down. And then they start realizing, oh, there's this concept called calorie density. You know, I wrote a whole book about that called the Eat More Way Less Diet about, about that concept. But I incorporate that. I have that concept in my peace diet book, how to eat more and still lose weight. Because let me just give you a good example. Uh, John McDougal will like this, you know, potatoes, if you get a potato, uh, I, I actually rate foods. I have a table called the Dr. Shintani's mass index of food. And if, and I estimated that an average active woman and an average inactive man uses about 2,500 calories. I'm just using that as a standard. Uh, it varies uh, for people. To get 2,500 calories, you would require 6.1 pounds of potatoes. Now, who can eat six pounds of anything, right? You ever see a five pound bag of potatoes? It won't fit in your stomach, right? However, if you eat potato chips, 16 ounces of potato chips makes 2,500 calories. Oh my God, I could, I remember when I, you know, when I was a younger, I could, eat a whole 16 ounce bag of chips myself in front of a football game, wash it down with a can of soda and then go eat dinner afterwards. And that's what people are doing these days. And that's why they're having so much trouble. If they would eat the whole potato as a baked potato, uh, they would be at full so fast that, you know, even if they ate as much as they wanted, they, they don't have enough calories to gain weight. And that's our basic concept. Yeah. But the thing is, it has to be in a fairly low fat environment, right? And this is what people don't. Well, yeah. When you add fat, you know, fat adds calories very quickly. A lot of folks don't realize that 
uh, one gram one gram of fat is nine calories. Uh, and uh, let me just give an example. Um, so j just for example, if you have a 2000 calorie diet and you want to follow a 20 percent uh, or let's say let's say uh, a 15 percent fat diet, okay, which I think is pretty good. That's uh, if you if you average it out, that's about 33 grams of fat, okay, for a whole day, 33 grams, that'll come up to 15% of a 2000 calorie diet, okay? One cashew is 0.9 grams of fat. I love cashews, okay? Grab a handful of cashews and how many cashews are in there? Well, maybe, let's just say 10. Well, that's now, now that's nine grams of fat multiplied by that's 80, that's 81 calories, but one handful is nine grams of fat. All of a sudden that's one third of your fat intake for the whole day. It's the same thing with uh, the, one of the worst things is salad oil, you know, tablespoon of, you know, whole potato or butter, whole potato is like a hundred calories, 120 calories. Tablespoon of butter is 100 calories, 120 calories, you know. And I remember in my old days, I would get a baked potato, and I'd be, I definitely use more than two tablespoons of butter on it. So now you have, you have two tablespoons. That's 240 calories of butter on a 120 calorie potato. Well, you're eating more butter than potato. So you know that's that's why it get you know our our modern high fat diet is really a problem because it makes it very hard to uh, to keep your weight down naturally. Yeah. yeah. And you're the one that explained to me on the Truth About Weight Loss Summit many years ago that the reason people say they're more satiated from eating fat isn't because there's anything special about the macronutrient of fat. It's just that the caloric density of fat being more than twice. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, I have a, uh, I think I have it in my book. There's a graph that shows satiety scores based on the percent fat of a food. And the higher the percent fat, the lower, when they say satiety scores, they're, they're, they're measuring satiety, how satisfied you are per calorie. And clearly the higher the fat, the lower the per calorie satiety. In other words, you know, some, somebody told me Oh, how come I, when I eat oatmeal, uh, it doesn't, you know, I, I need to eat some meat or bacon or something for, uh, because I, it makes me feel satisfied. And I said, that's because that's like five times as many calories. And they go, what? I said, if you're, if you're hungry after you eat oatmeal, just eat another bowl of oatmeal and you get full and you still have fewer calories than the bacon and eggs. And, and the butter on the toast, you know. Exactly. That's the yeah. biggest mistake I think people make is they. No, yeah, it, yeah, it's a total myth that fat is, uh, is satisfying. I mean, it's a, I shouldn't say it's a myth. It is satisfying, but that's be, but on a per calorie basis, fat is the least satisfying food. And uh, the only way, you, right, yeah, the only way you get satisfied eating fat is because it's a ton of calories. Right. And if people would eat more of the more calorically dilute foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, they would be as satisfied, have larger volumes of food. And exactly. Still yeah, exactly calories. Right. It's just so hard, Dr. Shintani, because people are brought up to believe that the only way to lose weight is to eat less. And that is the biggest disaster. Right. Right. <laughs> yep. Well, I love yep. calorie density and I love your work. And, you know, I, I just can't imagine it being that difficult to eat this way on your island because even your Costco sells those purple potatoes that we can't really get here in the United States, the Hawaiian ones. Yeah, right, right. I mean, that's yeah. like eating cake. I mean, like those, are, they literally taste like cake. Yeah, it, yeah. And actually, uh, sweet potato, it, it, you know, it, really interestingly, sweet potatoes have a lower glycemic number than white potatoes. It's really an interesting phenomenon. Um, and uh, I, I can explain why, but it would take me 
too long to explain. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you come back and give us that lecture. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have to have me on your show again. I yeah. would believe me. Once I found you, I'm never going to let you go. I mean, it was so funny because uh, when, when you didn't appear on in the waiting room for Dr. McDougall's birthday, I'm like flipping out and thank goodness somebody was able to yeah, read. No about trick, yeah. Oh, you did. You did a wonderful thing with uh, with John. He was so uh, touched. He had no idea. Mary kept it a secret all those months, and yeah, he had no that idea. Was, that that was, was that was very. I'm, and I'm and I'm glad you kept hounding me to find well, actually Lorraine started hounding me too she said you gotta be on this I said okay okay you know I had it on my calendar but you know if she hadn't called me I you know I have so so much on my plate right now what I'm doing now is I'm putting my program online how do you like that I'm doing it by webinar yeah, yeah, well my, let us know what it is this is fantastic yeah that, so my 10-day health program uh, which I, you know, you know, John has a 10 day program and he charges like, I don't know, 5,000. And it's I, a lot and cheaper I, now. I got, it's a lot, he, he does it online now. So it's, it's the, the price is yeah, much it's the same idea. Right. Uh, um, and so I'm starting to do mine, but mine used to be like $2,200 and, uh, um, it's much less now. So as soon as we get the kinks ironed out, um, uh, we, you know, we, we can do that online. So that's great. It's really Yeah, good. we'll come back on the show when it's ready and we'll, we'll tell people about it because okay, I, great. It. I appreciate it. That would be great. That would be really good. Yeah, yeah. people, people would love to, to, uh, to know about this and, and especially an affordable option because I'm, I'm guessing with the pandemic, were you able to still see patients or did you start doing some virtual visits? Oh yeah. I, uh, I, oh, I have a telemedicine, uh, <clears throat> portal. So I've been seeing, I've seen patients from from neighbor islands and things. So uh, in some ways it's, you know, uh, it's the yin and yang, right? You, you, you don't have the group meetings that you could have before, but then now we have a broader reach. Um, uh, in December, I did a world prayer session. I'm, I'm also into prayer. I did a world prayer session and we had people, uh, we had people praying from the four corners of the world. I had, I had a missionary in Africa. Uh, I had a missionary in the Philippines and I got uh, Martin Luther King's pastor who was in Alabama. So we actually got four corners of the world <coughs> praying together for peace. So we can do health together too around the world. Sounds amazing. And the island he works from is Oahu, right? Right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, are you only able to see patients in Hawaii? Uh, well, uh, you know, because, you know, this is an interesting thing. Uh, technically, um, uh, and this came up early in the pandemic. Technically, I'm not supposed to see patients outside of Hawaii because I'm only licensed in Hawaii. But because of telemedicine, I could see somebody from California, from New York, from Florida, from anywhere. And, you, you know, uh, you can understand why uh, to practice law, you have to pass the bar in each state because the laws are different. But the human body isn't different between states. <laughs> and so the truth is they, they really are trying to push for a nationwide medical license. Which that, is what they, what they should do. You know what the only barrier is, right? The states want the revenue from uh, charging people to uh, to get a license in their state. That's, so, that's, I never heard it said that way, but, right? The human body but, doesn't vary from state to state. I right. love that. But, but, uh, but the answer to your question is I could see someone from anywhere. Just, you know, the only difference, of course, is the time zone, right? Right. So. Yep. That's great. Yeah, I'd love to know more about your, your you know, what you do with prayer, because I find that fascinating, because I never, I, I, you know, what, what's the difference between, say, prayer and meditation? Are they similar? Do, do you do them differently? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, well, it's different, because meditation is, is really internal. Prayer is going out. You are, you are praying to the Lord, or praying for this or that. For meditation, it's internal. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a similar idea, but, um, yeah, there are, there are nuances to both. 
Yeah. And, and there are techniques for both. That's a subject for a whole other webinar. No, actually, right? no. I think I think some of the uh, some of the audience for sure would definitely be interested in that. You, you, you know, it reminds me of the old joke. What do you call an atheist in a coffin? What is that? What is it? Someone who's all dressed up with no place to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm glad I made it. I've been back doing stand up again. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little humor in there. That's oh, here, I have another one. Uh, what do you call a dyslexic agnostic insomniac? What do you call a dyslexic agnostic insomniac? Somebody who stays up all night wondering if there's a dog. <laughs> I'll be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for laughing at my silly jokes. I'm curious. What what do you eat? We love to know what our guests eat, and especially because you're in Hawaii, uh, you have access to poi and and purple potatoes and and, and all the well, I, um, I'm very I'm very fortunate um, because uh, actually um, you know there's <clears throat> um, there's now this concept of uh, intermittent fasting, um, so. Before they used to say it was bad to skip breakfast. Now they're saying that if you do it right, it's actually not a bad idea. It's actually bad for kids for school performance. But when we're adults, um, they actually find that intermittent fasting, in other words, going 13 hours or more per day, uh, actually helps weight control and blood sugar control. So I, I actually really don't eat breakfast anymore. My first meal is lunch, uh, and I'm very fortunate. I have these um, right down the street from my office. There's this, there's this. Um, uh, actually, it's kind of a Southeast Asian restaurant. That's kind of uh, actually, I think they're Laotian, but they do some between Thai and Vietnam. But uh, they have brown rice and they have side vegetables and they do, you know, the chicken, the, you know, the, 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 the seafood, the shrimp, the beef, the, you know, all of that. And uh, one day I went there and I said, and I noticed they have good side vegetables. I said, how much for just brown rice and vegetables? And we'll say, well, what, what, what do you want on it? I said, I don't want anything on it. So what do you mean you don't want anything? <laughs> I said, I just want the brown rice. And the vegetables, how much? And they charge me four dollars. Okay, it's just a plate full of brown. I eat that all the time. And if I if I get um, if I want something a little bit more variety, down the street there used to be a um, Mexican restaurant, and all I would do was get a simple what they call a street taco, which was ba basically black beans, lettuce, tomato, and hot sauce. So I would get a street taco, brown rice and vegetables, and I put the beans on the brown rice and vegetables, and that's my lunch. So uh, sometimes I would cheat a little. I would get uh, spring rolls, which are deep fried vegetarian rolls, but sometimes I would do that. Nice. And more often I would do summer rolls, which are uh, not fried. Yeah. The summer rolls are basically, they have that rice paper, you know, that rice, it's like a rice tortilla wrap around, uh, <clears throat> around tofu and uh, vegetables and rice noodles. So that's kind of what I eat for lunch. And I'm very, very blessed, very fortunate. <clears throat> my wife used to cook for my program. So when I come home, she makes me a nice vegan <coughs> And uh, by the way, my daughter also cooks vegan. Um, she cooks for the homeless on Sundays. So, um, <laughs> it, it, you know, I got to say, and I, I, mean, I don't, I don't mean this is a joke, but if you're going to be homeless, I mean, I can't think of a better state to live in than Hawaii. You know? Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because where I live so in the desert now, it's 120, and it's really hard to be homeless here. Right. It's hard to be homeless anywhere, but I mean, you know. I know, wow. right? Yeah, but but anyway, but um, so I'm very fortunate because both my daughter and my wife are are really good vegan uh, 
cooks. I won't call them chefs yet, but they're cooks. So, so that's what I that's what I do. And uh, do I cheat once in a while? Yeah, like anybody, I'll eat a piece of dark chocolate or something like that. Or um, <clears throat> uh, what was the what was the other thing? I um, well, I I actually. Uh, you know, I I don't recommend it, but I eat dried fruit sometimes. Actually, a, a fair amount. I eat dried fruit for sweets, um, and sometimes they have sugar added to it or something like that. So, have you ever had dried ja Have you ever had dried jackfruit? Um. Uh. I, actually, I think I had it in a in a meal, but I'm not. I'm I'm actually. You know, that's only become popular very recently. Right? It's, it's really good. I don't generally eat dried fruit, but like if I mean, haven't traveled since the pandemic, but when I did and I couldn't get enough calories, I would travel with dried fruit, like bananas and jackfruit. Because actually, actually what, I, what, I, what I used to do when I traveled was I'd bring trail mix. And I know it's high calorie, but at least there's, you know, you know, trying to get, trying to eat in an airport, it's like, it's a toxic environment. There's nothing healthy. So I bring a uh, trail mix and I know it's higher calorie, but then it's, it's, it's light and it'll fit in my uh, carry on. Yep. Do you have time for exercise? Yes, actually, uh, if you, uh, um, if you go to my, <clears throat> my YouTube, it's askdrshintani.com, askdrshintani.com. I didn't put that on my uh, slides, but if you go to askdrshintani.com, <clears throat> I have a picture of me. Uh, I, I, actually, there are two pictures, uh, but a picture of me at age 70. When I turned 70, uh, I, I showed me hitting a turnaround three-point jump shot on a basketball court <laughs> to show that I could do it. That is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So I, I actually go down to the basketball court almost every day to – dribble around and shoot back. I, I, um, I don't like to jog. I get very bored. My, my brain is, I got to have something for my brain to do. And if I shoot baskets, at least, you know, my brain is occupied looking at the basket. And um, so, but I do that almost every day. So. Well, if you ever have Dr. Doug Lyle or Dr. Alan Goldhammer come, they love to play basketball. I bet they would love to play with you. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, I'm, you know, I, uh, I thought I would inspire people who are 70 that they can still run around and, you know, do things. Yeah. That's great. Well, I'm very excited about your new program. Let us know when it starts. It's just been hey. such a pleasure catching up with you and finding out what you've been up to. So that dollar that uh, you paid Dr. McDougall, was that like one of the best dollars you've ever spent? Absolutely. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Well, what was what was worth more was the friendship with John. Yeah, he, he's a, he's a he's a really a great guy, and um, uh, I you know, I I actually give him credit because he stood up to the medical establishment and he doesn't back down, and I like that that he's uh, highly principled, and um, you know he's actually a very good role model, uh, standing up for what's what's right. Yeah. So absolutely. I agree. I wonder if he framed that dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I'll ask him. He'll be on the show again on the 21st because he was scheduled to come on the show. He didn't know it was a surprise birthday party. So I had to have him back to actually do the talk he was supposed to give. Oh, so. right. 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 That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Shintani. Okay. Well, well, great. <clears throat> so anyway, just wanted to remind folks if they want, a summary of the peace diet, then just go to peacediet.org. It's just one word, peacediet.org. And um, if they, they, they can get a uh, summary of the peace diet. And uh, uh, if you sign up there at peacediet.org, uh, I'll send out a, uh, my, one of my most popular free eBooks, you know, lose weight while you sleep. <laughs> That's another interesting concept yeah. well, and also with your program you can actually lose weight while you eat 
Yeah, now there's, <clears throat> boy, that's a great concept. News and lose weight while you eat. You can oh. have it. I used to be a copywriter. Please take it. You, you're welcome to have it. All right, well, let me know when your program's ready. We'll have you back on and maybe people will want to participate it since they can be anywhere in the world now. Yeah. Well, Chef AJ, I thank you very much. You're a gorgeous host. You're, you, oh. the, cam the camera really likes you. Doesn't it? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, Zoom has filters, but thank you so much. You're too kind. And I try to only have guests on that I really admire and really like. But I've been meeting a lot of new doctors. Dr. Chitani, there's this new specialty board certification in lifestyle medicine. And there's just all these wonderful doctors now. Oh, Somehow your your voice is cutting out. Oh, I was just saying that I've been meeting a lot of new doctors on the show that I've never met because of this new board certification of lifestyle medicine. And it's just amazing how many doctors, like you said, how many doctors, you know, study nutrition. At least now there's there's lifestyle medicine, which is it's, it's great. Right. Lifestyle medicine. <clears throat> yeah. But um, right. So that's kind of the, the newer iteration. Um, but uh <clears throat> Like I was saying that, you know, I, I actually review, I've reviewed books of other doctors uh, and I always find nutrition errors in them. You know, in yeah. other words, um, they'll say something about nutrition that isn't accurate. And, you know, I don't, you know, these are people that I, I like I, uh, um, and I don't want them to look bad when, when uh, an error, error comes up. So, um, right. but I think lifestyle medicine, that's a great trend uh, to, to, um, to add to uh, medical practice. In my days, all they had was preventive medicine. So that's my board certification is preventive medicine. Right. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, you, so, you're anyway, smart. You can, get another, you can get another board certification. You're a doctor, you're a lawyer, <laughs> you can sue yourself for malpractice. You know, what can I tell you? Yeah, you yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, I'm, you know, I, I know you're never too old to learn. So I'm actually, I'm actually learning, um, you know, er, every year I go to four uh, until the pandemic, I was going to four or so medical conferences and upgrading my knowledge. So there's so many areas I want to, I would like to upgrade and <laughs> lifestyle medicine. I'm kind of, um, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure I could teach a class and teach things that uh, even even the current professors wouldn't be able to teach. So, okay. yeah. Well, then I think you should. You know, I'm curious: is is bariatric or other weight loss surgery is very popular on the island now? It is. Yep. It's it's dis what's disappointing. Oh, but broke. they don't pay for money to prevent the need for the surgery you know and it's it's really <clears throat> it's un our, our system is uh is really screwed up in that way but that's why um a lot of things i do has to do has to be done outside of the insurance system you know it's like john you know why he had to have his program and it's not covered by insurance and yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, thank you so much. It was so okay. great connecting with you again. And we'll connect soon. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when I have a wonderful lifestyle medicine doctor on the show. Bye. Aloha, Dr. Shintani. Aloha. <clears throat> thank you. Aloha. <laughs>